here we go back with part two. Um, there's another type of conditional loop called a do-while loop, and there's the syntax. Of course, you can pause if I'm going too fast. Do, and this one's a little bit different because it has the keyword do, and then the curly brackets around all the stuff that gets looped, and then while the condition is true, it'll keep looping. The condition's at the end this time, so the loop's going to execute at least once. And then notice this one does end with the semicolon, so we've got to be careful with that. Um, and which one we choose to do, whether it's going to be a while loop like this or a do while loop like this, that depends on what we want to do. Remember, this one will execute at least once. So the uh, little example here, it says we often use conditional loops to control user input. So for instance, if you ask the user for some value and they give you something goofy, well, what you can do is you can loop until it makes sense. So for instance, I was talking about marks. Let's uh, stick to that um, that uh, uh, idea. I'm going to have an initial, I'm not even going to have an initial marks value. Uh, not. I'm just going to delete and I'm going to make this a do while. Do while condition. And the condition is going to be while uh, marks is less than, uh, or sorry, well, is greater than 100. So the idea is if somebody, if you're asking them for their mark, you know, you don't want them to, to enter something goofy. So I'm going to have um, mark equals prompt, please enter your mark. And then that's all junk, I'm not doing any calculations. And notice you, part of our, our condition was at some point this has to be true, or, or sorry, false, so it clunks out. And so um, if I were to run this and the people fall, follow the, uh, the prompt nicely, then it ends right away. No problem. So I'm going to save this and run it. In my browser refresh I'm gonna get a pop-up window please enter your mark and so I say oh, my mark was 250 well guess what it wasn't I press OK and it says please enter your mark 348 9 please enter your mark it's it's not letting me enter a goofy mark so if I enter my real mark which might be 72 fine then I can continue with the rest of my program this program actually didn't do anything um, but I could maybe after this loop, you know, type out to the console or I could do an alert. Uh, thanks for cooperating. You know, and I know in your program, you might have to do a calculation on the mark or whatever it might be. But here, if I save that, um, that'll work, right? So it'll only let me enter a mark that makes sense. You say, okay, Rastal, what about this? If I run this again, please enter your mark. And I, 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 if I mark, put in a normal one, 45 is a failing mark, that's okay. But, but that's going to be fine. It says, thanks for cooperating. Okay, done. But if I were to run this again, please enter your mark. And I write in negative 123, another goofy thing. That says, and thanks for cooperating. It should be saying, no, that's not right. You need to, you need to enter your mark in correctly. And so what I, what I could do then is I could add another condition. While mark is greater than 100, um, or you entered a negative mark, which is also stupid, less than zero, then it's going to keep looping. It's going to loop until marks is a decent value. So I'm going to save this, run it again, and that problem will be fixed. So if I put a negative 23 as my mark, it says, please enter your mark. Notice we could have made it better 
um, by having another little message here, please enter your mark from 1 to 100 or from 0 to 100. That might, might uh, give our users a little more idea of what we're expecting. So if I put a 90, press OK, it says thanks for cooperating, all done. Okay? That's what I mean in the note is to use conditional loops to control user input that they weren't allowed the user wasn't allowed to put in something that didn't make sense so i did a loop until they entered something that made sense so i'm gonna copy and paste that in there into my note and then i'm almost certain you have some exercises very similar to this this uh, work actually I think um, but uh, if you've already done if you already done the code Academy for the while loops and you've already done this you should be okay for the exercises if you haven't done the code Academy for the while loops track you should probably do that before you start the the um, the exercises because the exercises will be tough without having the the code Academy practice all right save your note Try the exercises.